Holy smokes, do we have some breaking news. Reports that USC and UCLA could be leaving the Conference of Champions as early as 2024. What could happen next? Let's go. Our Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Holy breaking news, Batman. I'm Spencer McLaughlin, your host of Locked On Pac-12, and this is a special breaking news edition because just a few minutes ago as I'm taping this, I'm going to put it up right after I record a report uh, originally from a tweet of John Wilner, who covers the Pac-12 conference, is written for a variety of outlets uh, from what I was able to discern reading his bio. USC and UCLA could be leaving the Pac-12 as early as 20 24. Colin Coward sent out some cryptic tweets indicating he had an idea or maybe had a source contact him as well. But here is what a uh, piece says. This is from Barrett Sally eight minutes ago as I record this uh, on CBSSports.com. Pac-12 powerhouses. I don't know if UCLA is a powerhouse. USC and UCLA are involved in discussions to leave the conference for the Big Ten as early as the 2024 athletic season. Sources tell, sources, plural, CBS, CBS Sports' Matt Norlander. Though the move is not yet final and still in the discussion stages, it appears as if the Big Ten is aiming to make a significant acquisition that will change the college sports landscape. Everything is on the table, a Pac-12 source tells Norlander. And then they talk about all the, all the recent conference realignment. It would get them to 16 teams, which is the same number as uh, as the SEC has right now. Uh, San Jose Mercury News' John Wilner first reported that USC and UCLA were playing to leave the Pac-12 for the Big Ten. I mean, this is this is a gut punch. It, it, it is an absolute gut punch for the Pac-12 if this comes to fruition. Now, it hasn't been finalized. There are no specific contracts or details, or we can't look at anything of, of the sorts. But j- just some initial takeaways here as, as this news is dropped. First of all, um, tough for George Klyovkov, who just got there. He just got there. He just started. Now he has to deal with this. And I, I don't think that he's even the guy who's really at fault here. I think you blame Larry Scott more than, than you would Klyovkov because – from a football standpoint, I don't think this makes a whole lot of sense. It makes no geographical sense. You're going to have the Big Ten full of all these Midwest schools, Michigan, Ohio State, and you know everybody else that's in it, Wisconsin, Minnesota. And then you're going to have two schools from Los Angeles. It doesn't even feel like the Big Ten, right? UCLA and USC don't feel like schools that, that, that belong in the Big Ten. The number one reason that they're doing this, why I bring up Larry Scott, is money. Money, 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 money. Money talks, bleep walks, as a, a podcast host I listen to named John Middlecoff says. And, you know, I'm sure he's not the first, but he is 100% right in saying that because the Big Ten gives more money. I talked about this on, on a recent episode in uh, in relation to Colorado not paying Mel Tucker, not being willing to pay as much as Michigan State was. The Pac-12 does not distribute to each of its football programs nearly as much money as the Big Ten does. And we're talking in the tens of millions of dollars. And in the world of college sports, that is a lot of money. Even though there's a bunch of money flying around, if you went to any athletic director and said, I could get you 12 to $15 million more a year or whatever the, the figure exactly would be. Let me look up the conference payouts uh, right now. But uh, let's see. Football conference payouts. I should have looked that up before I came on, but it's just all it's just been such such a oh boy. Um, there, there, there's just there's just a lot more that that goes into it there. Uh, so the Big Ten is paying their schools about 50 in 2022. This is from um, awfulannouncing.com. I don't know if that's uh, exactly right, but this is written March 15th. Uh, Big Ten. Paid out 57 million to their schools, SEC 54, the Big 12 40 million, and the Pac 12 34 million. So that that's how much they're paying each school, and, and these numbers they came down significantly a, after COVID slashed a lot of budgets. But still, it's way way up. If you went to any athletic director and said you get 15 20 million dollars more per year, would he take that? Yeah, of course. That's a bigger salary for facilities. It's a bigger salary for recruiting, for coaches, for you know everything that you need to run a successful college athletics program. So that that's the number one driver that I can see. Because from a football standpoint, I don't know why this makes any sense. If you're USC 
see, and you want to get back to the college football playoff, how are you in uh, anything but a great position in the Pac-12 right now? You have a couple legitimate teams that can bolster your resume, but you also historically have a pretty good non-conference slate that often includes Notre Dame. I'm pretty sure they play every year, actually. You get Notre Dame on the schedule every year, then you've got Oregon and, and Utah, and you know once they, they do away with divisions – uh, at some point, which will officially be done, but has already unofficially been done in the Pac-12 conference. Talked about that extensively on the show, but quick recap for those of you who weren't with me at the time. Winning the Pac-12 North and winning the Pac-12 South now no longer automatically gets you into the, the, the championship game. So as a result, what I think is possible is the Pac-12 could come at it and set the schedules you know, set them up so that you have the best teams playing each other every single year. So if you're USC and you want to get back to the college football playoff with Lincoln Riley, you don't need more money. The USC is not short on funding. That's not what's been holding them back. What's been holding them back is that they had Clay Helton as their head coach, and he started running it into the ground. Now they've got a coach who's been to the college football playoff. But you could have Oregon and Utah on your schedule with Notre Dame, maybe other another good non-conference game. You don't need the stronger conference slate, which the Big Ten absolutely has in comparison to the Pac-12. So I think from a certain standpoint, it's easier to get in the playoff in the Pac-12 than it is in the Big Ten. Because what we know about the playoff at this point in time is that they don't let in two lost teams. You can only have one. You can have one. But they have not put in a two-loss team yet, and they don't appear very willing to do that any point in uh, in the near distant future unless they were to expand it to eight teams and beyond, which I think is a really dumb idea. But I, I like the number at four. I think you should just stay at four. Again, conversation for, for a different day. So if you're USC and looking at it from a football standpoint – that's not coming. I, I can't see how that's a, a logical next step to get you into the playoff. Your path is now significantly harder. Like, would you rather go through Oregon with a first time head coach, Utah and maybe Washington if they can get back or a UCLA or somebody else who throws their hat into the ring? Would you rather go through that list of, of conference opponents or would you rather go through Michigan, Ohio State? Penn State, Minnesota can be good. Wisconsin is always good. That's a much, much tougher path if if you're USC. So I, I, I that's that's why my initial takeaway is that this is a financially motivated decision and nothing else, and absolutely nothing else. A lot of times you'll see conference realignments take place because you know schools want to build their football programs back up, or they feel that you know going to a bigger conference or a better conference where they could in theory get more money is something that's going to help their program get to where they want to be. But USC doesn't have that problem, even though they have been down the last couple of years. They were 8-5, and five, then last year they were 4-8, and eight, and then they did well in, in the 2020 season, but didn't win the Pac-12 championship. Like Even though they had a, a low level of success by USC standards, they're still not short on money. There's a bunch of donors at USC. They still bring in a bunch of like That's not the problem here. And so I, I just, from a football standpoint, I just don't see how it makes that much sense. Now for UCLA, I think you kind of, ha- well, actually, no, I changed my mind. You don't have to go where where USC goes, right? You can have a, a school. I mean, Florida's got, uh, Florida's in the SEC and Florida State is in the ACC. So it's not like it's uncommon for, for schools that are inherently rivals because they're in the same state or in the same place to be in, in, in different conferences. I mean, Texas A&M wasn't always in the SEC, and then they joined, and they were in the Big 12 before, I think. Yeah, that, sound, that sounds right. So that, that, that's not necessarily a, a requirement, but why would UCLA do that? Man, and I'm just reacting to all this stuff live. I, did, I didn't do a whole ton of, of prep for this segment, I'll be honest, because this news just broke and I wanted to just give you my live reactions here. I don't see what the advantage is for UCLA either. I mean, when was the last time UCLA felt like they were at a place where they could compete with Big Ten schools, right? I mean, a year ago, yeah, they, they beat LSU. They also lost to Fresno State. I mean, that that just feels like a program with, with Chip there. And Chip has never been in the Big Ten before. So you have to be assuming, if you're UCLA, that Chip Kelly is still going to be your coach in a couple of years. They just gave him a contract extension, so they're clearly thinking that. But the, the Big Ten plays a little bit of a different brand of football. I think it's kind of the SEC light in that it, it's a lot about toughness and physicality and having the big – though. Ohio State is certainly moving in a different direction, but look at a school like Michigan. You have to be willing to play that sort of style. And again, geographically, this just feels weird. It just feels weird. You're telling me that UCLA and USC, 
I mean, I think you're going to be at a, at least a little bit more of a disadvantage that you have to travel so much more compared to everybody else. I mean, going from Michigan to Ohio is not that far, but going from LA to Ohio, like both of these schools are going to have to do regularly, you're going to have to go to Northwestern. They're going to go have to play uh, Purdue, Minnesota. I mean, that's just a lot of long trips. I think you're putting yourself, it's not a major disadvantage because at the end of the day, it's about how you show up on the actual game day. But you talk to anybody in the sports world, they'll tell you when you travel over and over and over again, it wears on you over the course of a season. And that's just a lot of long trips to have to make compared to, you know, one game that USC plays every year is UCLA. That's a bus ride across, or it's a quick puddle jump flight, or maybe a long bus ride up to uh, the Northern California schools. And it's not, like, everything is right there because that's how conferences are, you know, kind of inherently designed. That's how we think about them, right? The Pacific conference is named as much because it's the Pacific life you know, insurance company or whatever, but it's right next to the Pacific Ocean. Like that's the, that's the whole point of it, and it's so incredible that this news also dropped because Monday is going to feature uh, Monday's episode is going to be about um, uh, what, what teams. And this is a question I was looking at before this news came out. If you had to expand the Pac-12, which teams would you add? That's going to be answered on on Monday's show in full. But I just a lot a lot of questions here. A, a, a lot of questions including whether or not it will actually get finalized, right? That's an important thing to note here. This deal is not yet finalized. Um, so will it actually happen? That's the that's the biggest question mark because you have to come to a, a financial arrangement. You have to get to a place as uh, as an administration, as a school, where you're comfortable making that switch. And, and football is obviously going to be the, the sport driving the bus here, but the other sports are going to do it as well. And, and you just, boy, you take out two programs. I mean, think about it from a basketball point of view as well. UCLA is one of the top teams in the Pac-12 on the hardwood. USC, the biggest brand on the West Coast in football. And we've been talking all off season about how Lincoln Riley is going to help re-legitimize the conference and, you know, bring it back to, to national relevance. And now this, I mean, that, that could be catastrophic. So whether or not it'll actually get finalized, uh, whether or not these schools actually think it's going to improve their, their football prospects as far as making the playoffs, because I think the answer is unquestionably no for both of them. I don't think UCLA is, you know, getting close to that level yet, but UCLA was trying to get to a conference championship level and just, you know, get back to a Rose Bowl. That's their ultimate goal right now as a program with Chip Kelly as a head coach. And guess what? That's going to get a lot harder once you leave the Pac-12. Man, that, that's just I, I I don't I don't understand that. But another question that comes to mind here is, are more schools going to follow? Because if the Pac-12, if the Pac-12 loses those two, could could the conference conferences have gone away before? Power Five conferences? No, not not at this point in time. But conferences have ceased to exist. The WAC is now an FCS football conference, but it used to be an FBS football conference where Boise State rose to prominence. And, you know, it went away. It did away with football because it wasn't making enough money. So I I think the next question is, is it just going to be UCLA and USC? Or is the Big Ten trying to go, you know, majorly big game hunting here? With like an Oregon, a Washington, a Utah, like are they going to follow or they do they want to stick around and, and stay in the conference? I, I wouldn't want to be an athletic director right now because that's a tough question to, to have to answer because the fan bases, I'm going to take a stab and say I don't think they're going to be particularly happy about this information because – Fans like consistency. They're not a huge fans of change. I understand that. I'm not a huge fan of change, generally speaking. I think uh, progress is good, but change for the sake of change is not, just as a general rule in life. But I, I just wonder if you know you have uh, if you start to throw rumors out there about you know an Oregon, a Washington, or a Utah potentially late, and that wasn't part of the report, right? I, I'm just kind of theorizing here about what could happen next. If those teams follow, or if any mixture of those three teams follow Oregon, Washington, Utah, which are, are the biggest brands in the Pac-12, right? It's USC, then Oregon, then probably Washington, then uh, then Utah. Utah, what? I was talking about that recently. I don't need to go back into it. But if you lose those teams, if you start losing all your best teams, I don't, I don't. The, the Pac-12 could cease to be a Power Five conference, or, or considered a Power Five conference. Because that's a, a generalized label based on the the caliber of teams that you have in your league, and, and you know what the conference, what what the conference consists of. But if you're suddenly looking at a, a conference with no USC, 
no UCLA, and then if, I don't know, Oregon and Utah were to leave, there'd be, there, there'd be nobody left. I mean, the Pac-12 has already had a, a lesser reputation for the last, you know, six, seven years or so from a football point of view. Well, really ever since Washington uh, made the playoffs. Since then, it's just been straight downhill. Man, that could be really bad. I, I mean, this could be really, really bad. And if you're George Klyovkov right now, the commissioner for the Pac-12, you, you have got to get on the phone right now and and, and understand or, or, or talk to the athletic directors at, at these schools and the presidents and whatnot and, and figure out what do we need to do to keep you to stay? Like, like what is pulling you, pulling you over there? And you've got to sell them on the financial vision. Cause as I said, I, I think money is the biggest driver here because I, I just don't see how from a football standpoint, it makes any sense. I, I, I really don't for either school. I mean, USC would just have such an easier path to the playoff if they stayed in the Pac-12 and if they went over to uh, the Big Ten. And UCLA, trying to regain promise, you want to do that in the Big Ten? Or would you rather do it in the Pac-12, where you're still going to get some credit for Power 5 wins, but it's not going to be as difficult because you don't have to go up against Wisconsin this week and Penn State next week. In the Pac-12, it's, you know, yeah, you have to play in Oregon this week, but you can get a Washington State next week. And it's really, really hard to recruit at Washington State. Or you could have a Colorado. And yeah, there are bad teams in the Big Ten. But top to bottom, the Big Ten is infinitely deeper. And it's not even particularly close. Um, boy, that, that, would, that would just be a disaster for the conference if that happened. You'd get two years of Lincoln Riley at USC. Because it, the, the report says that it'd be a, as early as 2024. So maybe it would be further beyond that. But if you're Klyovkov right now, you have to be selling them on how you're going to increase revenues coming in through. I mean, you got to get you just have to have better media rights deals negotiated here because that, that's that got to be one of the biggest things that, that would drive these schools away. And this just came out. This came kind of out of the blue. I hadn't heard any rumblings about this at all. Then all of a sudden, boom, looks like they're going to be leaving, but not finalized yet. So there there's 17 minutes of, of instant uh, instant recap and. If you got any questions, hit me up on Twitter at Smalls underscore 55 or at LO underscore Pac-12. That's the show. Uh, you can hop in the YouTube comments as well and ask. I, I'm sure there will be plenty of questions out there. Happy to answer them. Uh, we'll, we'll continue covering this uh, as, as as the weeks go on. Um, still going to be a show tomorrow uh, that, that was recorded and done all about recruiting before this, before this news broke. So it's acting as if everything is uh standard and status quo and such so uh like and subscribe wherever you're listening or watching right now thank you everybody for uh for tuning in and i'll see you on the show tomorrow and then on monday and uh just 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 keep the questions coming uh if uh if you have any out there happy to answer them see you next time have a wonderful rest of your day